Hey YouTube, I talk about 11 here, and as you may very well know, Apple just completed WWDC 2013, and it was jam-packed full of exciting new software and hardware information and developments. So here I'm going to go with my full overview of the 2013 WWDC. Now, starting off with something that's not really too much related to what Apple's announcing, but it was a company named Anki, A-N-K-I. And what they had, they were launching their company, and they bring artificial intelligence and robotics to iOS devices. And they showcased a track on, they, a little track that you lay down, and you put little cars on it that you can control from iOS devices. And it's a very smart, very cool way, and it communicates, and it has thousands of commutations at a time per second. And it was a very complicated and complex way. It's basically like a racing game for iOS with little race cars, and it was very cool. Next, Apple talked about the Macs, and they started out with the MacBook Air. Now, they didn't talk about the MacBook Pro in this, but they did talk about the MacBook Air. Now, they're bringing, they're talking about the major biggest thing here was battery life. And they're increasing the 11.6 inch Mac from 5 hours to 9 hours of battery life, and the 13 inch MacBook Air from 7 hours to 12 hours. So, all day battery life is what you get with the new MacBook Airs. You also get the 4th gen Intel HD 5000 Haswell uh, processor, so even faster. And then you get 802.11 AC Wi Fi which I'll get to in a second, which is basically a lot faster, it allows for better Wi-Fi, and it does start at a lower price now. So the 128GB model starts at $999, whereas the 256GB SSD for 11.6 inch is at $1199, and for the 128GB 13 inch it's at $1099, and the 13 inch 256GB is at $1299, and with most Apple products it is environmentally friendly. Next, Apple talked about the Mac, the Mac Pro desktop server itself, which I do have a full video on, so I'll have an annotation for that and check out the description to check out that video. Basically, it's been redesigned. It kind of looks like a trash can, you could say. It's all black, but it's the eighth of the volume of the previous Mac Pro. It's updated with new processors, much faster, and everything about it is top of the line, and it's redesigned to everything about it is so much faster, so much stronger, so much more powerful, and it would be much better value for what you're paying for. And the Mac Pros will be released later this year in 2013, likely in Apple's keynote that they have in the fall. Now, the next thing Apple talked about was Mac OS 10.9. Now initially they said it was C-Line, but just Kinley and they announced it, it was actually called Mavericks. Now Mavericks is due to that they're in California and that's where their headquarters are. But there's a lot of new things that came with I, or Mac OS X Mavericks. Now I'll likely have a full video on this, so don't forget to subscribe to see that and I'll go more in depth on it. But it brought new, um, cleaner and improved performance to Safari. It brought iCloud key change, members, passwords, credit cards, information, all of it very securely. Brought new notifications, quick reply for text messages, um, quick delete notifications on the lock screen, and you can auto update apps from the App Store now. In the calendar, you can have Facebook events, weather, travel time, and they didn't really talk too much about calendar, but it's redesigned and they got rid of the old Scott Forstall look and brought a new simplistic uh, calendar for Mac OS Mavericks. Now they also brought maps with Street View, 3D, Flyover, uh, Info Cards, Term by Term, and you can have it sync with your iPhone. So if you send directions to your iPhone from your Mac, you'll be able to get it on your iPhone and go directly to the maps that you chose. Also there's iBooks, which now brings 1.8 million books to your Mac, and it will be available in the fall. Another th cool thing about Mavericks is that it brings better battery life to your Mac. It uses tabs and finder for easier navigation. You can have multiple displays, which allows you to have full screen on one uh, one display and not affect the other. And you can drag the menu bar and dock to either of the uh, the desktops or the displays that you have set up. And now on to iOS 7, which was the star of the show. Something that basically that really was um, what everybody was looking for mainly, and what Apple saved for the end to really bring all they had. Now. As Tim Cook said, the biggest change to iOS since the original iPhone, and definitely is. It definitely looks a lot different, as you can see through some of these pictures. It's more of a bright feel, um, colorful, uh, everything has a little more texture. You see there are live backgrounds, um, even like the weather icons and all the stock applications are different. They take advantage of the full screen and they use more um, touch navigation through different gestures. If you want to see my top 5 features for iOS 7, definitely check that video. Also they brought... Um, you can now have unlimited um, apps in a folder, so you can have all your apps in one folder if you wanted. 
uh, new lock screen. Uh, you have notification center and lock screen, uh, and it's new slide up to unlock instead of just the regular slide. And everything about it is just cleaner. There's new multitasking so that you can see all your apps that are open and you can quickly swipe through and close them. Uh, there's live view with the applications, so true multitasking for every app. In Safari, there's new new tabs interface, uh, iCloud keychain, parental controls, and a unified search bar. Now there's also AirDrop, a new settings to the camera and photo applications, and Siri is a new, um, it, it's been redesigned and it looks different, and now there are male and female voices which definitely sound more human-like. And also there will be more controls and settings that you can tell Siri do, for instance, change the brightness. Now there's also Twitter integration, Wikipedia, Bing, and photo search in Siri. And then the App Store, there's auto updates and then the music, it brings iTunes radio and a revamped look and feel for the music application. Now they also have FaceTime audio, which means that you can just make audio calls through FaceTime. So it's kind of like Skype or like uh, FaceTime, except it's audio only, so it's just like a phone call. And there's also notification sync, so it'll sync with your iPad, your iPod, your Mac, etc. And then you new activation lock, so if you lose your iPhone and track it with um, Find My iPhone, you cannot activate your iPhone unless you have your username and password to save from somebody stealing your iPhone and getting your data. So all in all, iOS 7 has been vastly changed. It's very cool, definitely some of the changes that I looked like, and I'll be getting it soon in beta form, and I'll have definitely videos on that. So please subscribe, and I promise I'll have a ton more videos on WWDC 2013 and iOS 7. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.